Hi, and uh, welcome. Thanks so much for doing uh, this interview with me, Travis, from Nashville. You have uh, over 30 properties or just about 30 properties. And, yep. um, and I'm very curious to ask you uh, various questions about your business strategy and, uh, and, and how you've been uh, going through the current crisis, because I hear you've been doing okay. So we'd like to know your tricks and your secrets. Um, but first of all, please tell us a little bit about you, what you were doing before uh, the property management and what you're doing now. What's your kind yeah. of role? Of course. Well, thanks, Vanessa. I'm glad to be on here. Um, so before I got into the short-term rental business, I was doing healthcare sales. So selling um, speech recognition software to hospitals around the southeast of the United States. Uh, it was a great job, um, but ultimately I didn't really want to continue in the corporate world uh, and started to find a niche in the short-term rental industry and uh, was able to kind of capitalize on that and grow my business a little bit until the time where I decided that I was going to put in my two weeks notice and then move to Bali for the next uh, six months. So uh, it was definitely an um, interesting transition going from working full-time, um, you know, traveling Monday through Friday every week uh, for meetings to, you know, automating my business and, you know, surfing and working out and, and hanging out at, on an island somewhere. So, um, so yeah, but that's, that's kind of how I got started. Um, I, uh, you know, talked to a, a friend of mine here in Nashville. Um, I wanted to just purchase an Airbnb property uh, as an investment property. And so I wanted to kind of pick his brain and see how he did his Airbnb business. That's all that I knew is that he had an Airbnb business. And, uh, once I started talking to him, he um, explained to me how master leasing works, uh, kind of told me about the regulations and, and, uh, and what you'd be looking for and, and kind of how to operate after that. So once he told me that stuff, I kind of went home the next day and started making phone calls to properties that were for rent. Um, you know, a few weeks later, I found my first two and it was all kind of uh, downhill from there. Just uh, continued to grow over time and uh, was able to, like I said, automate my business by the time I left for Bali so that I could be hands off. And, um, and yeah, so that's been great up until COVID. <laughs> that's amazing. And a uh, great story. But how long is this ago? When did you uh, start? This was uh, 2017. Okay, so it's so very three years ago, right? Yep, and you're already yep. on 30 properties. Yeah, 30 properties. And, you know, I've, I've tried to grow, um, you know, try to be smart about how I grow. So my biggest fear was just continuing to, continuing to invest uh, all my profits and something like this happening um, and it all being wiped out from under me and without making or saving any money from it. So uh, I could have certainly grown uh, more quickly, but I wanted to do it in a smart and sustainable way. I want to hear everything about that. Um, but first of all, before we started, you said that you, you, you're not into brands. So you, you, you don't want to grow a brand as such. You want to um, tell you know, I, I do. I see both sides of it. Um, and it depends on, you know, which way you want to look at it. Uh, I know as a traveler, I use Airbnb all the time. I travel, you know, multiple months out of the year. And when I look at like some of the, my favorite Airbnbs or short term rentals that I've stayed in, uh, one of them comes to mind. I was in Berlin uh, in a really cool neighborhood in Berlin. Um, and basically I walked into the, the Airbnb and it was like the people had sheets over their clothes, like basically just walked in and they had just walked out. Uh, and it was just a really cool experience for me because, you know, I was living in this, this neighborhood that didn't have hotels. Uh, I was in a, a flat right above a bunch of really cool restaurants. Uh, the place was decorated like a Berliner would dec decorate it. Uh, and I basically got to, for a week, feel like I was from Berlin and, you know, part of the community. Um, so the way that I look at it is a lot of times travelers, um, they, they want to stay with other locals. Uh, that's kind of what I see as one of the biggest benefits of the sharing uh, economy in terms of accommodation. So if I was a traveler and I was traveling to Nashville, um, you know, I'd be looking in, to stay in like Travers places or, you know, Sarah and John's place. Uh, some people that live in Nashville, maybe have a couple places. I wouldn't want to stay in a place, you know, 
that's a company that's headquartered out of San Francisco that just owns a bunch of or has a bunch of master leases um, and throws some art and furniture into a unit. Uh, also, I think when you go that route, um, people might be a little bit more picky uh, and might kind of give you give you bad reviews. So on short term rental platforms, I do keep my brand as just, you know, Travers. Um, but I do have a side brand called Como uh, or staycomo.com where you can do direct bookings. Um, and I do need to grow that, but I need to do it in kind of a, a smart way that that doesn't make me look too corporate, in my opinion. And so how, how do you scale not corporate? I mean, is it going to be Travis, just Travis welcoming you? Like, are you planning to scale? How do I scale? Not, well, I mean, so basically you can have a hundred properties and say that you're Travers, that you're hosting them, right? You can have 200. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a point where I might need to switch, but right now um, with 30 properties, I like to keep it simple and, and more personal. Love it. Um, and so tell me about the master lease model, because you said you kind of cracked it during the, during the, during the crisis, you managed to actually be in profit still. So what, what, what's the trick? What did you do? Yeah. So the master lease model, obviously um, where you're basically taking on leases with apartment complexes or landlords uh, and getting permission to kind of have subleases signed underneath that without permission from them. Basically, the landlord gives you permission to run a short-term rental out of the property. You pay them rent every month, just like a long-term tenant, um, and you manage the operations from there. Um, so yeah, I think there's, there's definitely a strategy um, for getting into those uh, that's pretty complicated. I came from sales, so I was able to kind of jump into that and figure out the best ways to, to kind of talk to these landlords. Um, when you compare it to other models, I mean, you look at you know, third party property management or what are people are calling revenue sharing model now, um, where basically you're managing for the owner and taking a percentage fee for as a management fee. Um, you know, there's pros and cons to each one of those. Uh, the, the master lease model has a lot more upside. So, I mean, if rent is $2,000, but the property is making six or $7,000 a month, uh, you get to keep a lot of that profit. Um, whereas the, um, the revenue sharing model depends on the market is a percentage anywhere from 10 to 35%, depending on what market you're in. Um, so the good thing about revenue sharing is that, you know, there's a lot less risk. So there's no limit to how large you can grow as long as you have your, your operations in place. Um, so, you know, the reason that I never really pushed, I, ha I do have a couple uh, management clients, but I haven't really pushed that too hard so far because I kind of got spoiled. Like I said, I moved to Bali um, and I was spoiled because I didn't have a boss. Um, now, if I have 50 investors or, or you know, people that I'm managing for, that I'm basically working for, I've felt that that's going to put me in a situation where I'm going to be reporting to them and I'm going to be responsible to be on call to talk to them whenever they need to talk to me. So that's kind of what's held me back from it. But anyway, um, I'm a big fan of both models. The master lease model has shown some, some trouble for a lot of people um, since COVID started. Um, basically, you know, I was down in Costa Rica and that's when I realized that Airbnb was giving full refunds to all the guests. And I basically panicked and said, holy crap, I have this huge nut that I have to cover every month. And my bookings just went from $120,000 to $8,000 within like four days. So I was in a pretty big bind. But, um, you know, at that point, I just had to pivot and adapt and do whatever I could to get my places filled so that I could pay my rent and my expenses. Um, so you know, one of the things that I did was creating a, uh, a website called medreliefhousing.com. Um, so this was like mid-March, kind of before anybody knew it was going to happen. But I just thought that, you know, Nashville has a lot of hospitals here, a lot of big medical centers. And uh, I figured that a lot of nurses and providers would be, would be coming to Nashville, you know, to help out with the pandemic. And that also providers would want to kind of quarantine themselves from their families so that they wouldn't be getting their family sick and whatnot. So I made that website. I learned some PR tricks from one of my buddies and reached out to tons of reporters. I probably had like 15 news articles done 
was on the front page of the business section of like the biggest newspaper here, which was pretty cool. And, uh, and that helped me a lot, but also just, you know, I gave myself a, a quota where I told myself every single day I had to find one renter for a property. So that's what I dedicated myself to. And after a month I had like probably 75% of them filled with month to month tenants for about break even. And then, uh, I was able to push off any reservations that didn't cancel. I was able to put them in my remaining units. Uh, and I kind of just kept my, my top properties as short term rentals and was able to get by that way. Wow. Super well done. Um, and the months to months, how, how did you find the customers for months to months? So I tried anything you could think of. I mean, I did the, the, you know, nurse finder, the nurse travel websites. I did, uh, Zillow, Craigslist. I really found the best one. Like the thing that worked the best for me was, was Facebook marketplace. So I would get those. So I'd find people from there. I would talk to short term rental guests and see if they wanted to continue staying. Uh, that helped out a lot. Uh, probably my saving grace was construction workers because Nashville is a booming city. There's tons of construction going on. Uh, and construction did not slow down or didn't stop at least. Um, so basically I would find, I found one construction worker from Facebook marketplace. I found one from uh, Airbnb and was basically able to get them to tell their friends. And so I have like six or seven places filled up with construction, construction workers right now. They're paying week to week. And uh, you know, with the, the normal people that I was finding off of Facebook marketplace, I was just able to kind of break even on those, but the construction workers, since they're basically I've configured it in a way where they pile into these places. I have like bunk beds in the rooms so it can sleep as many people as possible because they're used to staying in these uh, extended stay hotels. A lot of the subcontractors that come in town for like six months, they don't want to sign a 12 month agreement or furnish a place. So they stay in these extended stays where, you know, they're paying seven, $800 a week for like a studio, with like two beds in it and they'll try to sleep three guys in there. So for less than that, I can give them a one bedroom apartment with three queen size beds, uh, full kitchen, washer and dryer, living room, dining room, uh, walking distance to their job. And, you know, $600 a month is giving me a pretty nice profit. So, uh, so the construction worker thing has been, has been really good and something that, you know, I'm honestly going to consider continuing to do even after all this is over. Um, a lot of the guys are coming in and they're renting just from Sunday to Thursday or from Monday to Friday. Uh, so that way I can clean and turn the property and these larger places, two, three bedrooms, a lot of the times only really book on the weekends anyway. So I can rent, still get my high dollar bookings on the weekends and then have guaranteed revenue that's going to cover my rent or mortgage costs during the week. Incredible. Uh, you've done super well. And so just to, just to be clear, it's just you doing this? You have no help? No, I do have help. So I have uh -huh. one W2 employee. Uh, she's the best. Um, she started out as my, my first cleaner when I was getting started and has moved up to be my property manager. So um, normally she handles everything from guest communication to problems with guests to, you know, coordinating cleans and maintenance and all of that. She's, she's awesome. Um, but I've had to step back in from COVID just to make sure that everything is, is getting covered and, um, we're still going strong. So we're looking forward to getting back to normal. That's incredible. Just the two of you, it says property is insane. Um, so it, you must have lots of technology to help you. Tell me about the tech stack. Um, I don't really do a ton. I mean, so before this, I was just on Airbnb. So I was only on Airbnb. I used Beyond Pricing to set my pricing, Smart BNB to send automated messages. Um, I'm learning a lot about, you know, other options now. Uh, but basically, after the whole Airbnb guest refund thing, I decided that it was smart for me to go ahead and get on other platforms. So that's when I got Owner Res. So I implemented Owner Res. Uh, which allows me to be on Airbnb, uh, HomeAway, and uh, direct booking. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, the direct booking is good now because I have like, you know, basically I put up a sheet in all my properties that are operating as, as short-term rentals um, that 
tells guests they have they can like pass out a 15 percent discount code to any of their friends if they come back to nashville so uh so that's been working pretty well so far and i plan on you know implementing some email campaigns um because i'm collecting guest email address and things like that so um once i get some free time i'll, I'll get around to getting that all set up um, and what about uh, home observation, the, uh, keyless entries and things like this? Did you implement those in the master leases? Uh, yes, I do have keyless entry. Um, I don't have the smart locks. I do just have coded locks where we go in and, and change the codes every once in a while. Very good, very good. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm into distribution. So how, how, how do you choose your channels that you want to work with? I mean, when you did that whole midterm stunt with Zillow, etc. This was all manual, right? Are you, you, yep. are you, you're not planning to automate any of that? I mean, you automate Airbnb, Verbo. How do you choose your, your channels? How, how, do you see it, um, how do you see it doing this in the future, let's say? Yeah, so I mean, I don't plan on staying with midterm bookings forever. Um, right. I mean, from, I haven't really given much thought to technology to help with midterm bookings. Um, my strategy is really just to kind of grow my, my contacts in the construction industry um, so that I can kind of have, I mean, what I basically want is to have like an email list slash uh, phone number list where I can send out available properties through email uh, or text as they come available to these construction workers. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said before, I was just an Airbnb guy. Um, they always did me well until the spring and, um, you know, didn't really see a need to switch to any other platforms because the majority of the short term rental stays in Nashville, for example, were just on Airbnb. I know in, in Europe, booking.com is bigger, uh, VRBO or Verbo, um, you know, that, that works a little, that works some, but it's usually for larger properties. Um, especially in leisure markets. Um, but, you know, now I'm on both. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes and see if I can kind of build my, my Verbo name and, and properties there. Cool. Let me know how it goes. If you are we going to stop this, because thanks so much for doing this with me. But, uh, and it's been really insightful. Um, but the, the last thing I want to know, is what's the advice that you have for, for other people that are listening to build um, a sustainable property management business like yours yeah in the I'd future biggest, in the future i'd yeah. say my biggest piece of advice is just to take action i mean um if you don't you, you can sit here and plan all day long um but it's really just about getting out there putting yourself out there if you trip and fall then you're just going to learn from it and you can continue to grow and eventually you'll become an expert and you'll know everything about it and uh and you can just continue improving yourself from there so just make sure to get out there and, and take action I like it. You're, you're a go-getter. <laughs> Very good. Well, thanks so much, Charles. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for doing this. All the best to you. And, uh, yeah, and we'll stay you. in touch. Yeah. yeah Cheers. Thanks, thanks so much. a lot. Cheers. Bye. <laughs> mm.